everybody. Happy Friday. <laughs> Sorry, we had, we had to plug in phones, all kinds of stuff happening here. All right, welcome everybody. <laughs> Happy Friday. It's almost Halloween. So we're doing, um, I think this is the last of our pumpkin projects that we're doing before we kind of switch over to fall and holiday. So a lot of good projects coming up that we'll be um, uh, teaching you and hosting here on Michaels. Um, thank you, Michaels, for having us. You guys, Michaels has been so amazing. They have this awesome library of all these classes for you. So after the fact, if you're not able to craft and you're just here to get inspired and um, watch along with us this afternoon. You can always go back and watch this video and past videos on michaels.com on their community classroom page. Um, we have John here in the other studio, so he's going to answer any questions or comments. So make sure you're um, asking him if there's anything you want to see while I'm crafting. I am happy to try to do it um, on demand for you. Um, you mm -hmm. guys, we have been in the studio all day here, so it has been a long day. So I'm excited to get to actually craft instead of just talking. Um, we've been shooting a lot of uh, voiceovers today for videos. Um, also, all these products are available on michaels.com or in the store. So you definitely want to um, grab your folk art product, get your um, pumpkins. Michaels got, has just such a great array of different sizes and different colors. You can do these projects on anything. Um, all these techniques can also be done on a canvas. Um, John, we're going to do a giveaway at the end. So sure. we're going to select somebody random from the comments at the end, and we're going to let you know who won um, some awesome plaid product. And I'm trying to think what else. I think that's all the things I have to We've got people. We've got people logging in from all kinds of cool places. How's your Spanish, by the way? Because we've got somebody from Spain and someone from Ecuador. Hi, no? guys. Happy Friday. All right. I guess we're just going to go English then. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. All right. Okay. The beauty of crafting and painting, it's not a language. It's a it's a universal language. There we go. So okay. okay. So we're gonna be showing you um, some mandala pumpkins, how to do easy mandala, and then also scribble and patterns. So I don't know if you all know, but every year Pantone um, comes out with a color of the year. So this year it was a really beautiful, like true royal blue. Um, blue is really big in decor um, and fashion. And so that has been happening for a number of years and we always try to use that color in our projects. But this year they actually came out with a pattern of the year. So scribble pattern is pattern of the year. So this is a great I, um, example. So it's kind of just a really beautiful pattern in freehand scribble and pattern. So you'll see this all over wallpaper, all over um, home decor pieces. So we thought, why not do it on pumpkins? So we um, got these great pumpkins, these fake pumpkins at Michael's, and you can buy them again in all different colors and shapes. We base coated some of them so you can get them in black and white. We actually went ahead and painted this blue. And then we tipped the stems of all these pumpkins with treasure gold. So you guys know I'm obsessed with treasure gold paint. You've heard me talk about it. If you don't know what it is, it is the most metallic paint out there on the market and it is non-toxic. You guys, you can see your reflection in this and I hope it never shows up, but I hope you can tell how beautiful it is. If you haven't seen it in person, it is amazing. So we just use our treasure gold and we painted the tips of or the stems of all these pumpkins. So once you do that, and I actually have just a gourd here. So again, pumpkins, gourds, I love gourds, especially this time of year because it's gonna take you and transition you more into your like Thanksgiving and fall before we get to Christmas. But again, these all work together. So we painted him just a beautiful warm gray, let him dry. And then I'm going to show you guys a product we haven't used on one of these classes before. I'm very excited about this. So I'm using um, just our folk art acrylic paint. Again, we have a number of formulas available at Michael's. It's an amazing creamy acrylic paint. We make multi-surface enamel. There's a ton of specialties. This is just the regular um, folk art acrylic that I'm going to be using. And this is a two ounce bottle. So we make these fine tip tops. So if you guys haven't seen these, again, michaels.com are in the store and they come in a pack and they, it almost looks like the top of like a, a ketchup bottle, like an old school ketchup bottle, but it has, um, it's screw, a screw top. So what you do is you take the lid off of your paint, right? 
it'll work on a two ounce or eight ounce, anything that has this kind of opening. And you just screw it right on there. And then it turns your bottle of paint into a fine tip writer. So it's almost like old school puffy paint. Um, and I'm just gonna use this black canvas since I have white here. But look what you can do. You can squeeze right out. And you get a ton of great control. And I'm just gonna use this black canvas a lot to show you guys today what I'm doing. But you can see and you just, you'll get a feel for it. And you can kind of control the flow. So how great is that? So great product. It is a fine top tip. So this makes it really easy to create all these patterns. So I don't know if you can see, I've gone ahead and drawn out with a pencil. You can transfer a pattern, but you definitely, I like to have a guide. So just using a regular pencil and I've drawn, and it's really kind of, I like to get inspiration and then kind of freehand it. It's kind of like a doodle, like very relaxing. So for example, on this blue guy, you know, start with dots at the top, make a little squirrel, another line, some lines, some triangles. It's really whatever you want it to be. It's not this like, like really strict rule. You can just be super creative with it. So don't be afraid. And again, acrylic paint, you can always let it dry, scrap it and paint over it. Like that's what's so great also. Okay, so I'm gonna take this writer tip. Okay. Then, like I said, I've kind of created a pattern on here and it's probably hard to see, but you'll see once I start to put the paint on here. So I'm gonna start just by doing my little dots, right? And how easy is that? Just dot right out of the bottle. And again, it's it's very relaxing and soothing. You know, painting um, is one of those things in crafting right now that is such a stress relief. My paint's running right here. Whoops, little runny. Um, it's really warm in here. And then I'm just going, but what I was saying was painting and, you know, crafting is one of those things that is such a great stress relief for people. Um, it's You can kind of unwind and unplug. So this is a great way to do that. You could plan out if you're nervous, you know, some people are like, oh, I don't want to go straight to my pumpkin or my canvas. You could plan this out on paper and just kind of follow along. That's a great way to do it and practice to get started. So let's see if I can see my lines here. Okay, so this, and again, it's great just to look on, you know, check out michaels.com, see what other examples that they have. Um, you know, get on Pinterest, all different kinds of places you can get inspiration from. So I'm just going to keep going. John, does anybody have questions? Um, Is everybody they, mesmerized by this tip? They were. I mean, at first, this. yeah, a couple people were asking, you know, if there was like a pattern for this, but it really is just sort of something that you do kind of. Yeah, but you could absolutely um, go with the I'm flow. Huh? If we could get these to Michael's. I know the mandalas are up, but we could probably get them to post um, this or maybe include it when they post the video if they want this specific pattern. Sure. Or, you know, again, it's just inspiration. You could totally freehand it. Yep. These writers are really great for kids also because it's like less and mess. And you don't have to worry about a brush. Yeah. The, the name of those tips again, is it a, it's a fine tip. Yep, top. it's a fine that tip top. They come in a pack. And yeah. they are in the craft section right by our folk art paint. Yes. And then online, you can just search that right on michaels.com. So again, all this product is available at michaels.com or in the store. And again, no rhyme or reason. Again, it looks super easy, but it's just basically doodling with paint. And that's why I love it. This bottle is way less intimidating than using a brush, I feel like, right? Like a brush, you're like, oh, it's a brush stroke. How much paint do I load? This, it just flows right out of the bottle and you can control it so easily. See that? So I'm just gonna finish this row here and then I'll get started on the mandalas. But how easy is that, you guys? Beautiful. Oh, good. And I love Alicia. the gray and the white. Again, this is a great transition. So we uh, Felicia yeah, just posted the link for the for the fine tip tops in the oh, chat. Thank so you. Awesome. If you don't have awesome. the chat open, go ahead and do that. 
Yeah, so again, this is one we've already done um, with the fine tip top. And you could even just go back. I'm just gonna show you how easy, if you wanted to add dots, you know, you could just add dots right along the seam of the pumpkin. Just super duper easy to do. So much control. It's also great for writing. So if you wanted to spell out something, you know, you could um, transfer an image or a name and you could absolutely, you know, if you wanna write boo, makes it so easy to try to do that with a brush, it would be a little harder. So just with this fine tip top, it makes it so simple to control. So, so easy and fun to do. Okay. So if nobody has questions, I'm going to start talking about mandalas. Yeah, I would say let's keep going. Yeah. Oh, somebody has a question if these are good for rock painting. So absolutely, you can use any of our folk art paints for rock painting. I would suggest if you're going to truly place your rocks outside to either use a multi-surface paint and the same goes with your pumpkins. Use a multi-surface paint and or you can seal with any of our great Mod Podge formulas. Um, especially we have a Mod Podge Outdoor or Mod Podge Ultra, which is indoor outdoor. So that's going to really give it the added protection. So your colors and your pattern and design are not going to fade. So again, Folk Art Multi-Surface, Folk Art Outdoor, and Mod Podge Outdoor or Mod Podge Ultra are great products if you're gonna take these projects or your rocks and put them outside. It's gonna just protect them from all the elements. Yeah, you're welcome, Peter. So mm -hmm. it's uh, sometimes like if I look up, I can see the comments, so. Okay, so we've done some mandala painting before, but it is just a great technique. Again, it goes hand in hand with the scribble and the pattern painting. It is absolutely um, just a relaxing thing. So the Mod Podge I was just talking about is Mod Podge Outdoor formula or Mod Podge Ultra. Mod Podge Ultra is actually a spray Mod Podge. It's a glue and sealer, indoor, outdoor, all in one. So it comes in a pump spray. It's not an aerosol, so it's non-toxic. So you definitely wanna check that out. It's new to Michael's this year. And we've used it for you know a number of projects. Some of these um, pumpkins back here, we've done um, the Mod Podge Ultra to hear the yarn um, mm -hmm. too. So it's a really great formula. And there are traditional um, spray acrylic sealers too, like in Mod Podge and and, and in other. Uh -huh. Yeah, so those are good. Absolutely. If you really want it protected for the from the elements, a, a good spray sealer is a good idea. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so for a mandala, um, I'm just going to practice on this black canvas that I was playing with the tip on, just to show you, and then I'll go to the pumpkin. So, oh, show the yarn under the under the camera. So this is the yarn that we did. We just did a 31 on a black pumpkin. So we did that using the Mod Podge Ultra. And we also did a, um, a spider web. You guys can see that. So I love him. Super Halloweeny. Halloweeny, that's a word. Sure. <laughs> So um, I've just got a black canvas to show you guys. So I am going to um, use a piece of chalk and here is a tip for the chalk. You want to go ahead and either use an um, X-Acto knife or a piece of sandpaper and sharpen your chalk. This way you get a really sharp line. So, you know, chalk gets really dull. This is just everyday um, school chalk. And if you sharpen it, you get a really nice point. So that's really helpful when drawing your lines and patterns. Just using a ruler. And so what you're going to do anytime you start a mandala is you're going to start by making um, a cross on your surface. And of course, I would measure this, but I'm just going to show you guys as an example on here. So there we go. So I'm going to make a cross. Then, and the great thing about this is once you paint, you can just wipe the chalk off. That's what's so great about the paint. You can just rub it off once your paint is dry and you're not going to be able to tell that you had a cheat sheet basically on your project. Then you're going to split that cross into sections. So you almost want to do an X on top of the cross. So there you go. Just a um, very simple, loose pattern I'm going to show you. Okay, some tools you'll need to do mandala. And again, you guys always have great ideas of other objects that you can use. 
Um, one that we make and actually Michael's carries are these stylus tools and this comes in a two pack and it is great because they are double ended so you get four different size and they're actually little metal balls and they make it really simple to dip in your paint and dot. So again, you get a two pack of these and it's four different size dots that you can make using these. So these are great. If you don't have these or in addition to, right? I love mandalas because I think variety is so important to create these beautiful patterns. So other objects that you can have and we're gonna actually be using today is the tip of an eraser. So you want a brand new eraser that has not been used. So you could have used the sharpened end, the point where you write, or but um, you want the eraser to be brand new and never used because you really want that beautiful round surface area to dip your paint in. So that's always great to have. Dowel rods. So dowel rods are great because you can get so many different varieties, big and little. So we just have some simple dowel rods, two different sizes. And we also have a glue stick. So a glue stick has that really great flat surface. So that works really great. Also dip right in your paint and you can create dots. And then the end of a paintbrush is always great. Anytime you're making dots. I know Jesse and Kirsten, they always use these when we're doing our Let's Paint Lives. This is a great way to create beautiful dot patterns, really simple and you always have it on you when you're painting. Okay, so what you're gonna do is, I'm gonna put out some paint. I'm just gonna use white since it'll show up so well. I'm just gonna put some on here. So again, I'm just using our Folk Art acrylic paint. And so a tip about doing mandala also is you want to dip, dip often and make sure that you're going up and down. You're not slanting and going side to side or holding. You always wanna go straight down in your paint and then straight down on your surface. So for example, if I'm using the stylus, I wanna dip right in my paint and I wanna go straight down, pull straight up. Dip again, always re-dip because you're gonna get that perfect dot. Dip down, pull up. Now you could probably get one more out but then as you keep going, it's just going to start getting softer and not your circle's not gonna be as big and even. If you're reapplying paint every time, it's gonna help you get the perfect size dot that's going to match. And that's what's important about Mandala. See, that one's a little bit smaller because I didn't dip again. So you're, almost, you're double dipping, triple dipping. Every time you wanna place a dot, you wanna make sure you go straight down into your paint and then straight down into your surface. So it's very, it does get very relaxing. Okay, what size stylus are you using? So this one, these, the two pack we have, there's four sizes and you know, I am not gonna lie. I don't know the size of the one. This looks like an older one here, but this one is a 2.8 and a 1.8 on here. So I know it's a, there's four different sizes. I don't know, John, if you can look that up or put that in the comments. Sure. So, okay, so those are the tools we're gonna use. So once you've done your X, this is a great way to always start is to have an X and your cross. Then you always wanna do your middle dot right in the center. So I'm gonna get my pencil eraser. And again, I'm just showing you guys how to practice. So straight down, dot, okay? Then what you're gonna do is you're going to go around your lines. You don't want to you don't want to do all your blues first. For example, I want to try to do all these oranges, right? Because they're going to be like spacing. It's going to be really hard. You definitely want to work around your lines and go from the middle out. So that's really important when you're doing a mandala. Okay, so next um, I would change my size. So I'm just going to use this little dowel. I'm going to dip right in my paint, go down, and then I'm going to dab. And now remember, this chalk is gonna come right off, so don't worry about it. Then I'm gonna go across. So you always wanna work across. So I'm working on those lines there, so you can see, right? Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my stylus. I'm gonna go smaller. Again, variety is really important also. And I'm gonna do the actual line cross pieces, if you can see that. And you can see how easy this pattern begins to form. And you're almost creating like a circle from the inside out. Okay, 
so then you're saying, oh, I want another size. So switch it again. And this way you can also be switching your colors. So you kind of, I like to have like a wet paper towel or baby wipes. You're just like constantly wiping off the ends of whatever tool you're using. So then I'm gonna go in between my dots. And you just wanna keep working all the way around. Any questions, John? No, I don't think so. We were, uh, the, the size of the stylus is, was posted yep. now in the, uh, in the chat, yep. so. Yeah, so you can see how this is really beginning to form and you would just keep doing this all the way out. Then what you can do is you can layer. So for example, say you're like, oh, I wanna add another dot, I would let this dry. And basically by the time you work your way out, there's so, such little paint on these projects that it's dry. Then what you would do is you always wanna use a um, dot that is, or a tool that is smaller than the one that you did before. So for example, on this eraser, if I wanna add a dot in the middle and create a layer, like for example, we did on this pumpkin here, guys, I can never get near things. I always show you guys around. Ah, okay, so if you wanted to create this guy right here, you always wanna start, see how we build it up. We did largest at the bottom, then we went next all the way up and built all the way to the top. So you can add as many layers as you want. So I would do a smaller, I'm gonna use a dowel rod. I'm gonna go right in my navy and I'm gonna dot right on top. And this, wet, this white is a little bit wet, so it's not gonna show up as well. Yeah. So you would just do that, right? And you would just let that dry and you could keep building up. So that is a super simple way to create a mandala. So the same idea you would do if you were doing it on a pumpkin, whether you were doing it on a, any kind of surface, you wanna start with your pumpkin and this is just a white pumpkin. Um, this is base coated navy, but you could absolutely paint it with a treasure gold. We can go ahead and do that and I can show you how beautiful it is. I'm gonna start with your pumpkin and a little tip and I actually don't have any here. Let me see if there's any tape. Can you check in that drawer over the second drawer down? Sorry, if you use a piece of stencil tape or low-tack tape, it'll hold your pumpkin in place so it's not gonna roll around. So I'm just gonna have, there we go, we got some tape there. Also some baby wipes, like I said, baby wipes are wet paper towel. It's just a great, it's like one of my favorite things just to have because you can wipe the tips off and then just keep reusing them. So you kind of have your stash of tools um, for your mandalas and your dot painting. Okay, so this is just our um, low-tack stencil tape. And again, this is a great way to keep a round object from rolling. You just do some big donuts. And this tape isn't going to ruin your pumpkin or your, um, if you painted it, it's not going to take the paint off of it because it's a low tack made for stenciling. So, tape him down. So he's just going to help. Okay. So I'm going to start in. Just for um, the sake of the video, instead of chalk, I am, and it's a white pumpkin, I'm gonna use a pencil to draw my line. So I'm gonna start with my um, line down the center. And again, once the paint dries, you can go ahead and erase this. And then I'm gonna start, I'm gonna make these a little bit darker just so you guys can see them. And it's just a loose pattern. So don't worry if it's not perfect, it's kind of hard to draw on the ridges. And then I'm gonna do my X across just, that's what I wanted to show you guys on the canvas. So I'm making these pretty dark so you can see them. Okay, so that's gonna be the start of my mandala. And I've got some beautiful fall colors here. So I've got light lavender, tangerine, um, light blue, navy, what I'm writing down here, <laughs> purple. So wicker white I have, we're not gonna use white on this unless we wanna layer. And then again, the treasure gold would work just as um, great as the regular folk art paint to do these dots. And again, you know, I would probably, and I'll show you guys, just take the treasure gold and dot in the middle of these to add some accents and do the um, stem of the pumpkin. I keep calling it a tip. Okay, you could also use this um, fine tip writer to create your dots. So that's another way if you just watch you could absolutely do this. Now you get a little less control, like as in control, I mean, you may not get the exact same size every time like you do with a stylus, but once you get a hang of it, you know, you can just practice and it works great. 
right? You have to have a little bit more self-control of how much paint you're squeezing out. But you can see, you could totally use this um, to do your dot painting or mandalas. So Kira, a lot of people are sharing ideas for other things. I guess, you know, pumpkins are in short supply these days. Uh, <laughs> Everything is. <laughs> right? But I guess we're getting close to the holiday. So we're moving people, on to ornaments soon, you but, guys. I promise. We're going to have brand new projects and ideas for Christmas ornaments. And, and so actually ornament, ornaments a great one because people were like, even for other seasons, yes. uh, you, you guys have done all kinds of canvases. You do it on, you can do it on glass. So you can yeah. paint on, you know, just, you know, any, any surface like that you can paint on. Yeah, we actually um, just made some projects for Michaels for their website that are mandala ornaments. So absolutely a great way to do it. Right. Yeah, so stock up. <laughs> We're done with pumpkins. Um, so once you've done your lines, then we're gonna start, I'm gonna place my paint out here and I'm just using palette paper. You can use a paper plate or whatever you have to put your paint out on. And again, I love unexpected colors for fall. So I love the purples, I love the blues. Again, this is a great project. And this set here that really transitions you, if you can see these transitions in this per beautiful like purpley eggplant from Halloween into really like your Thanksgiving decor and like more fall before you get into Christmas. Some more paint down. Oh, I already put light blue down. Purple, love this purple. Okay, beautiful color palette. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with our largest um, size circle. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and be brave and use the glue stick. And I'm gonna take my navy I'm gonna go right in the center. Okay, so again, baby wipes, wet paper towel, great just to keep wiping off because you don't, remember, you don't wanna do all your navy at first for all the same size. You wanna really work out from the center out. Okay, so then I'm going to use my pencil eraser and I'm gonna grab this beautiful gold color and I am going to dot on my Cross that I made. So again, working across, across, I'm going to stay there, across from each other. And you guys, I didn't dip. So you remember what I said, you got to dip every time you forget. I'm talking and not paying attention. You got to dip and paint every time to keep it consistent. That is a really important tip. And, and one of the questions that had come up earlier, when you are layering multiple colors onto one dot, you're gonna wait for that to dry before you then go back with a second color, correct? Yes, yes, so absolutely, we can talk about that now. Um, so this is completely dry, beautiful pattern. Then all you need to do is you always wanna take smaller than the dot that you're gonna be adding to. So I'm gonna use the smaller end of the stylus. I'm gonna dip right into what is gonna show up good here. I'm gonna dip into this yellow and I'm gonna go right on top of the purple. So down and up, so down and up. So yep, yeah, you can just keep adding. And it also is great, like once you're like, oh, I think I wanna add some more to that. You know, for example, if you wanna add treasure gold to that, you know, just get your treasure gold, pour some out. And again, you guys, so beautiful, can you see that? This is a beautiful copper color. And a little bit goes a long way. It's kind of it's like liquid gold. Okay, so dip right in there. And again, great coverage. It dot right on there. And you're like, oh, I kind of want to fill in with some gold, kind of been looking at it for a while. You can just go back and just keep adding and fill in as much as you want. I feel like you can never have enough. Hmm. So yeah. And some people were, were talking about comparing it even to the pouring. And if you actually look, if you look online at, at inspiration, there are folks who pour and then you go along the, the lines of the pour with dots, you know? So Absolutely. there's so many things you can combine together to, yeah. Um, yeah. So really, you know, spend some time looking at inspiration for these mandalas yeah. and you've got a bunch of patterns and things that you can kind of, be inspired by when you try it yeah, yourself. Yeah, I mean, what you could do even, and sorry, I'm getting away from the pumpkin, but we have this beautiful pour here. 
and what you could do, if that's okay, guys, I'm just going to keep going where we're talking and I can get back to this pumpkin. You could absolutely, and these colors work great. All you would need to do was take your tool and, um, you know, I love this copper. So what I would do is you could take and you could dot right along the edge of this and almost create a mandala. So you're like combining, like John said, mm -hmm. multiple different techniques. So you guys can see that. And we're gonna dot right on him. And it's, you know, it's kind of like that scribble dot pattern. You just wanna keep adding. So again, you could just keep going with this and create this beautiful pattern right on top of your pour. And it just gives it so much depth and personalization. Yeah. So you could change that up. And that's such a beautiful technique. You could do this whole little strip here right on the black just to add it, um, just to add something different to it and make it different and change it up. So that's yeah. a great tip. Okay, so I'm gonna get back to our pumpkin real quick. Do a little bit more for you guys. Thanks again for joining us on Friday, everybody. Hope you guys are gonna get to craft this weekend. So I am just gonna add my purple. So I'm gonna go in between the yellow and go all the way around. And again, it's great to get your base and kind of do a bigger pattern. And like I showed you on the blue pumpkin, go back and add details. So you really wanna get a good foundation and then just keep going back and adding more and building up. Cause you can't, it's hard to take away but you can always add more. So I'm gonna switch and I'm gonna go to my light blue. I'm going to do a dot between my purple and my yellow. So again, dip straight in your paint every time and then dip straight down. You want to make sure you don't go in at an angle. Okay. Any questions, John? Well, what happens if you make a mistake? Is there a way to get okay. the paint off? Yep. Okay, so if you make a mistake, and I gotta pay attention here. Okay, so if you make a mistake, let it dry. Go back and you can paint over it. Do not try to wipe it, smear it, fuss with it. My recommendation is go wait till it dries and you can go back and paint it and fix it. Because once you get in there, you're gonna start smudging and you're always gonna hit something else. So it dries, hit it with a hair dryer and then paint over it. Um, also, a lot of times, once you let it go also and step back, because sometimes when you think a dot is off or it looks odd, sometimes once you get so many dots and patterns on there, you can't even really tell, right? Like it looks perfect. One might not be as perfect, but once you get it all on there and it creates this beautiful pattern to like somebody else or, you know, you're not even going to see that. So, Right. So I'm just using the end of my paintbrush. And again, always use your guides. That's really important. So if you don't have a pattern that you've printed and transferred, always use your guides because that's going to naturally create a pattern for you. So you either want to be working on your X or you want to be walking on your cross, right? So that's going to help. Look how fast and easy we created that pattern. We've got a really great base going. So it's going to just give you a great guide. I'm going to get right back in my purple here. Okay. And now I'm going to go and again, just use that pattern that you've created. So that's such a great tip. So it's beautiful. And again, you would just let this dry and you can keep building it up. And you're like, hmm, these are really big. I want some more small in the middle. Again, just grab your brush get right in there and you can always go back and add. And again, always use your lines. So you either wanna be on a line or in between a line and a dot. Does that make sense? It truly is easy. You're like, oh, I could never do that. But if you just follow those simple guides, you're gonna create a beautiful pattern every single time. It's really easy and foolproof. And again, I'm gonna add some of this beautiful treasure gold copper because we are obsessed with treasure gold. I'm going to hit every line on this one. And when and you get a second, yeah, hold it up close to the camera too. When yep. you get just when you get a second, because people yeah. want to see close up. You know what's also great is that you can do one big pattern, or you could also do smaller ones. So, for example, 
like this one's gonna be one big, Oops, I'm stuck here. Again, the tape worked. Um, you could do one big pattern. Oh, you guys see? Beautiful. Or you can create small patterns all over. So like an all over pattern. So these are just small patterns all the way around the pumpkin. So all you do is you, you know, you do your first one and then you're just repeating that. So, you know, you do, um, you know, your purple center and then you work your way out on every one and it's really easy to repeat. Great way to do it also is take a quick picture with your phone once you have a pattern and then you can just mimic that and follow it. And as long as, you know, we started out by doing this is using our ruler and we know our cross is say three inches by three inches. And then we know our X goes in between that. So you know every time you draw on your pumpkin that it's gonna have that same line and guideline to follow. <laughs> you can see the bottom we did paint here. Um, so I think this is actually a paper mache pumpkin. So any pumpkin will work. So yeah, any more questions, John? No, I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, everyone's loving these ideas though. Yeah. I can tell you Thank that. you guys for joining us. Okay, so look, I was just not paying attention. Let that dry and you can just hit it with some white paint or even scrape it off sometimes with even like, you know, a little exacto knife. I would not try to mess with that because what you're gonna do is no matter how careful you're gonna bump something and you're gonna create a bigger mess. Um, that is just personal experience. It is paint, you can always paint over it. You can even sand off paint, you know, especially if you're working on a wood canvas, um, let it dry, hit it with a little bit of sandpaper, it's gonna come right off and base coat over it. So that's a great tip also. And again, like that middle is almost dry just from what I've done here and how fast I've done it. So then all you'd need to do is take, for example, if you wanna do your white, you could go right back in over that navy and do a white dot. I would let that dry and I would do gold right on top of that. So again, it's always just building those layers. And again, this is white, but you could go back, take your fine tip tool and you could add dots right to this. So again, great way to add additional dots if you're in love with this fine tip tool. But yeah. again, our folk art stylus is amazing because you get four different sizes. And then again, you also just have great household items that you can use, you know, a glue stick, a dowel rod, um, the end of a paintbrush is always great. You always have that handy to create any kind of dot and detail. So um, like on the blue one, when you have that really larger circle in the middle, how huh? did you do that? Like yep. the, so, the big circles? Yeah. Yep. Yep. So um, what was I going to say? Yes. So you just want to add more paint to create the bigger dot. So I would use my largest shape. So if this is the largest I have, I would just get in my paint, push it down to create your dot. And then if you want to go bigger, you can kind of work it slowly. Can you see that? Kind of just working with that shape. And you kind of just want to, because you have a lot of paint on there, see how much bigger and round it gets. Sure. Does that make sense? So look in the white. So instead of trying to like take a brush and like draw a circle, you're never going to get it perfect. So I would just dip my largest circle dowel rod. I'm using glue, a glue stick here, press down and then just kind of start working it, swirling it. Right. And the paint is just going to naturally, if you move it around in a circle, you're gonna get that perfect dot. So it's really kind of like this motion. I know I'm covering it because you have to be straight up and down. You wanna have enough paint, whoops, straight up and down, enough paint, push down and then start swirling it. And it will naturally create that dot. Don't try to draw it. Ta-da. Yeah, that's great. And that's all you gotta do. Um, and this is straight paint. No, yeah. yeah, no, no water. Correct. No water, all paint. And we're just using our folk art acrylic paint. Again, you could use um, folk art enamel, multi-surface, outdoor. You could use the treasure gold. Color shift would be great. Also, any of those would work awesome. Label of the treasure gold. Yes. So you guys, treasure gold, I'm telling you, the most metallic, metallic paint out there, like reflection. Um, it is beautiful. It comes in a bunch of traditional metallic colors like golds and silvers, but it also becomes, in, or comes, becomes, 
comes in some beautiful jewel tones. So you definitely want to get this. It is like what we add to all of our projects. It's a big joke. Like, what does it need? I don't know. Need some treasure gold. It's kind of like our new glitter right now. So we love this. And you can see we even painted this little guy here, this beautiful treasure gold. We just taped him off and painted him. Again, all the tips or all the stems of these pumpkins are treasure gold. So they're so beautiful. And I love the pop of the metallic, especially with the black. Did you, oh, anybody else? Any more nope. questions? No, I don't think so. Um... Bogart Glitterific is awesome also, yes. So if you have to have glitter, um, Folk Art Glitterific is amazing because it is a no mess glitter. And again, you could put that, especially on pumpkins and getting ready for um, the holidays, you definitely wanna get Folk Art Glitterific. It is amazing. It is a multi-particle glitters suspended in, clear, in a clear acrylic paint. It is amazing and it is no mess when it dries. That's actually um, on this canvas here, what we used. So this is Glitterific. And this is no mess, like literally rubbing it, no mess, haven't sealed this, literally out of the bottle, this glittery, beautiful. And again, Michael's has beautiful colors um, that they carry that we make, but glitterific, definitely. And this is glitterific, this is treasure gold, and this is our folk art paint. So a great combination project. Yep, and I saw that Felicia just posted a link to the treasure gold for michaels.com. So oh, you thank you. Yeah. Out. Awesome. And, yeah, and, uh, you know, we have a lot of these poured projects. If you guys are interested in that, we did them way back in May, I kind of think when we started doing this, but they're definitely available on demand on Michael's Community Classroom page. You can absolutely check those out and learn how to pour with us. Hey, Catherine. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, everybody, thank you so much for joining us again. Um, we will be back on Monday with a Let's Paint Live. We've got two classes next week with Michaels. We're going to be doing a beautiful fall welcome sign. You definitely want to check that out. Um, and then you guys, we're going to be switching over to doing a bunch of Mod Podge projects actually in November. So you definitely want to check that out. Switching gears, going more fall and holiday. Um, everybody have a great weekend. Thank you so much. Enjoy your crafting and relaxing. Um, oh, John, you got to pick a winner. Oh, all right. Okay. Let me see here. I'm going to scroll up through my comments. And how about Candley Jones? Candley oh. Jones. Candley. Congratulations. Are you still send watching? A, yep. I, well, I hope she's still on. But send us a note. Um, go to Plaid Crafts Facebook page and direct message us there. And that'll be an easy way for us to get your address yeah. and get some prize pack out to you, okay? Yeah. So, Candily, go to our Plaid Facebook page, give us a message. We'll get your information and get you some product out there. So that's our way. If you can't get this in your hands right now, we'd love to be able to give away product. And so thank um, you, guys. Nope, oh, sorry, John. Oh, I was going to say, since we're just talking about it, let me. I would be remiss if I didn't give a quick shout out. If you don't follow Plaid Crafts on Facebook, I definitely would invite you to do that because we have all kinds of content like this that we do there. Um, if you're into paint pouring, we have a whole section of our website on paint pouring. We have mandala projects. We've got all sorts of fun stuff. Um, so please, and, and a newsletter that you can sign up for. So please, uh, please do that and continue to join us here in the Michaels Community Classroom as well because this has been a lot of fun and we're here every week with you guys. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Michaels. Thank you, everybody, for spending your you know hour with us or 40 minutes of your Friday. We appreciate it so much, and we're so happy to be able to inspire you. So we'll see you next week. Bye, guys.